Hi, welcome back to my Alan Bradley PLC Desk Bench. Today I'm going to do something that may sound simple to those of you that have already done it, and that's how to put a Control Logic's chassis and modules together so it's ready to use on your bench or in the field in a cabinet, however. So it's pretty straightforward and simple. There's a couple or three major parts and some minor parts and we'll get uh, swung around here so that you can see it at the bench and uh, we can go through it. It's not that complicated but it does take a little bit of finesse but not much. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back at the bench here. Now, I'm going to have to do this in a couple or three steps so that it's uh, easy to understand. So here's our chassis. In this particular case it's a 10 slot Control Logic Series B chassis. Here's our power supply that goes on to this end, and here's the two modules we're going to be putting into the chassis and in and out a few times. So, it's pretty simple. Now, when you look at these, we'll just move these out of the way. That's loose, that's loose, and this is fairly snug. Now, there's a reason for that. It's kind of a pain, but if you don't have some play in there you end up the modules are too tight and there's no airflow and as we all know heat destroys everything electrical so here is our chassis with the power supply end that doesn't work <laughs> and the, here's our two mounting holes there's recessed uh, threaded inserts in there this is ABS plastic that breaks real easy and we'll go through that what to do when this breaks in the next video so these I have occasionally bought power supplies that have come power supply with this screwed on here now to get that off of there and leave it on here is kind of strange because the chassis is no good without this. This has to stay with the chassis. That's what these two screws, which are there's two Phillips head screws there. It's pretty straightforward. So what we'll do is I'll just uh, move this up a little closer so it's easier for me to work on and hopefully easier for you to see. Just drop down just a little bit. So there, we, we're just working on this end for now. So to put this on here, it seems pretty straightforward. It should just slide down. There's the connector on this end that plugs into this receptacle here, which is the power rail for the entire back plane. So, like I say, sounds simple. You get it, and you have to get both sides lined up. Now you see these little indents here. Those are kind of like guides. Now you have to sort of wiggle it down, and this time it went on quite easily. You take your number two Phillips or red Phillips screwdriver, which I should have had set up, but I didn't and you just tighten them down. Now tighten is a uh, relative statement on this. Is You want them snug but remember you're dealing with metal screws inside of pl uh, a plastic piece that breaks easy. So we're, there we go we're ready to put power to this, turn it on, and everything would be powered up. So, we'll close that up, and that's how easy it is to install the uh, power supply. Now, to take it off, it's just the reverse. So, you would think. You loosen off the screws until they're out of the inserts. Sometimes they go in real easy and sometimes they don't. And then 
In this case, it's not tied down, but you'd have to get your fingers on there. And you can see, you have to sort of wiggle it off until you get it up to the point that you can pull it off. So they're not that, once they're on there, they like to stay on. So, like I say, and then you just slide that back on, and you can see in here, there's not really any space, because when you tie down those screws, everything will be tight, and you're, which makes sure that your connection at the back is tight. That's how you ensure that you don't have a loose connection on your power supply rail going to all of your modules. Um, so there we go, there is that. Now, because, you know, the manufacturing tolerances, that's why this is loose in the slot, like this one. There's not a lot of play, but there's a little bit. Okay, so, now we're ready to insert a module. So in this case, we'll start out with a communication module. This is just an old uh, ENET. It's dead, but it's a good test module for this sort of thing. And you slide it in so that your part here slides in there. And you wiggle it down and did you hear it click? So to make sure, you know, it's it's in there tight. To get it out, you have on the bottom these two clips. There's one here and one here. That's your locking clip. There's a little tang on that that fits into the hole that's here. So to get it out, you have to push both of them in at the same time and wiggle the module until it slides out. Pretty easy. So if you had more than one module, it's exactly the same. So we'll go to this side of this one. This is just a, an old DC output module. Again, clicks in. This time it'll be quiet when I push it down. You heard it click. So there you go. That's how to assemble, very basically, a chassis with modules and a couple of modules and a power supply. So that's real simple. In the next video I'm going to do, I'll show you how when these plates get broken, and it's usually this one and this one that get broken the most. That's because this is really cheap ABS. So come back for the next uh, video and we'll step through that. Thanks for watching. Uh, come back anytime. Uh, subscribe if you'd like. And have a great and fun weekend. Bye.